Well, welcome to uh, question two at the end of chapter three, um, all about fluid flow through porous media. Um, I'm going to tackle question two in a slightly unusual way because I would normally say draw a basic diagram, but the diagram for question two is going to look very similar to that we drew for question one. So I'm going to leave that out and just go straight into the calculations. So we have this um, cylindrical bed with ion exchange resin in it and the particles are two millimetres in diameter. The voidage is given, the viscosity is given, the density of the fluids given, uh, the design flow rate five metres cubed per hour. Well we're definitely going to need to convert that to a velocity and that actually is the first calculation that I think we ought to start with. So we know that the uh, superficial velocity is going to be equal to the flow rate divided by the area, the cross-sectional area of the bed. So let's start off with that. So we've got five meters cubed per hour and we want to convert that to meters per second. So first of all let's divide by 3600 in order to um, convert that into meters cubed per second. Um, and clearly we're going to need to divide by the area, the cross-sectional area. Um, for that we need uh, it's pi d squared over 4, so we can put the pi here. Uh, the d squared, the diameter squared, uh, the diameter of the bed is 0.2 meters, so we pop that in down here, 0.2 squared and we can bring the 4 up to the top here because it was pi over 4 so we can bring that up there. That cancels nicely actually with um, the 3600 so we get 5 over 900. Um, not a lot else we can do. Let's, do. let's put that through the basic calculator so we have 5 divided by 900 divided by 3.142 divided by 0.2 divided by 0.2 so that gives us a velocity of not 0.0 0.044 meters per second. Okay, so we, we're going to need that for the cassini kalman equation uh, and, and some other things as well. Another thing we're going to need is the specific surface area per unit volume. Okay, now the specific surface area per unit volume for a sphere, SV, is equal to 6 over x. We've seen that from previous derivations done for question one and also for the um, uh, questions at the end of chapter two, the particle size uh, questions. So x is particle diameter and just here you see we have particles that are two millimeters in diameter. So a specific surface area per unit volume is going to be six over two millimeters or 0 0.002 meters. So that's going to give us uh, an answer of 3000. Okay, so that's 3000 meters squared per meter cubed or just meters to the minus one. Simplifies to meters to minus one. I think that's all we need to know for the cassini kalman equation. Let's see how that goes then. So first of all we need the cassini kalman equation um, and ignoring the minus sign again its pressure gradient is equal to viscosity the permeability which will use the cassini equation for permeability 1 minus voidage squared 
specific surface area per unit volume squared all over the voidage cubed and then multiply by our superficial velocity u naught. Okay, so if we put some numbers into that, the viscosity we're told is naught point naught naught seven five Pascal seconds SI units. We then have the five inside the brackets. 1 minus the voidage is 0 0.55, so that's then 0 0.55 squared. Okay. Um, and then we have the specific surface area per unit volume squared, so that's 3000 squared. All divided by the voidage, 0 0.45, 0 0.45. 5 cubed and then for the superficial velocity we've got 0 0.044 okay mm, quite a lot to actually work out but let's give it a go <clears throat> okay so if we take the velocity which is still on the calculator and multiply by 3000 and then another 3000 I did say it was a basic calculator times by 0.55 times by 0.55 times by 5 divided by 0.45 divided by 0.45 divided by 0.45 and then finally times by 0 0.0075 gives us 49,523 but don't forget that that is the pressure gradient what we haven't done yet is taking into account the length and the length is the length of the bed is two meters so we need to multiply that by two times by two which gives us pretty much smack on uh, 99,000 so that's a pressure drop by the Cassini Kármán equation of 99,000 pascals okay so that's the answer to question one Well, the logical question that we have to answer is, is that an acceptable equation to use? Um, we need the modified uh, Reynolds number in order to answer that. So the modified Reynolds number, which is like every Reynolds number, a ratio of inertial to viscous forces. The simplified version of the equation, though, is rho the density of the fluid times by the superficial velocity all over 1 minus the voidage times by the specific surface area per unit volume times by the viscosity okay and we derived that in question one so the density we have for this material density of the fluid don't forget for this material is 1100 kilograms per meter cubed so let's put that in at the top 1100 kilograms per meter cubed uh, u naught is uh, naught point zero four four 1 minus the voidage is 0 0.55 0 0.55 SV is 3000 3000 and the viscosity 
is not point not not seven five. Um, yeah, we could tidy this equation up a little bit, but let's see whether we can do it without having to do any calculate any tidying up. So that's eleven hundred times by point zero four four divided by point five five divided by three thousand divided by point zero zero seven five gives us a value of three point nine one so the modified Reynolds number is three point nine one I suppose it'll come as no surprise to learn that that is not in the lamina region, the streamline region, because a modified Reynolds number needs to be less than two for there to be negligible turbulences in the process. Clearly, if we've got a value of 3.91, which is uh, answer A, if we have a value of 3.91 then we have significant turbulence in, in the process. So comment on the use of the cassini kalman equation. Right, let's approach this in an engineering way. We've used the streamlined flow equation, an equation that only takes into account viscous drag in the process. Okay, so if I do draw a little sketch diagram here now, here's our bed of particles okay and we're saying the flow goes over the surface of these particles and in viscous drag there's no turbulence it's just the shearing nature of the fluid as it passes over the particles and down and through the flow channels however in addition to the viscous drag uh, our degree of turbulence being significant means that we don't just have these streamlines, for want of a better word, going through the bed. We have additional turbulence inside the bed. So that means that there'll be an additional pressure drop. If you like, the total pressure drop is that due to the viscous drag plus that due to the form drag or the, or the turbulence inside the bed. So if we had 99 kilopascals pressure drop by a viscous drag equation, yep, that's what it was, 99 kilopascals due to viscous drag, 99 kilopascals. So that's going to be plus some additional pressure drop due to the turbulences. Um, how much is that going to be? Well, 3.91 isn't enormously greater than our threshold of 2. So we would expect the additional drag to be something in the order of maybe plus, shall we say, 50%. You know, from an engineering perspective, if we were going to do that. So we would expect there to be a total of maybe um, maybe 140, 150 kilopascals. You know, we're, some, we're expecting something in that sort of order. It's certainly not going to be astronomically uh, far out, but it's, it's, it's far enough out in, in that we shouldn't really be using the equation. We know we should be doing something better to get an answer for this. OK, so let's see what we need to do. First off, we need to do the interstitial velocity. That's the first thing that's required, because we're going to need to investigate what's going on inside the bed a little bit more carefully than we have done so far. Now, the interstitial velocity is a superficial velocity divided by the voidage. So that's quite straightforward. That comes from continuity. Um, you're just squeezing the area open to flow down into a smaller area because of the particles that are present 
inside our porous media here. Um, and that ratio it comes from the, um, the voidage, the porosity. So we had a superficial velocity of um, 0.044 meters per second and we have a voidage of 0.45. So the interstitial velocity is uh, 0.044 divided by 0.45 is 0 0.098, 0 0.098, it's answer number B. Okay, that's the interstitial velocity. So the superficial velocity is 0 0.044, uh, then here we have 0 0.098 meters per second. Okay, what else do we do we do we need? Well, we're heading towards the use of the Kármán correlation. The Kármán correlation was in the box out. There's there's the Kármán correlation. Uh, it was in the box out next to the to the question, which I've just reproduced over here. So uh, if we write the Kármán correlation back in here, because we'll be losing the um, uh, the box out in a moment, that is the shear stress. R is the shear stress over the surface, so that's going to be in um, pascals. And then we have the density of the fluid, the interstitial velocity, which is what we've just calculated, and the Kármán correlation says that that um, sort of friction factor approach, the shear stress over rho u squared, is equal to 5 over the modified Reynolds number, which is actually um, broken up into, well, let's just call it a correlation, and then 0 0.4 over... Reynolds number to the power 0 0.1. Okay, so that's what we want. Well, we know what the Reynolds number is. The Reynolds number is 3.91. So that is a, a relatively straight calculation to do because we have 5 over... 3.91 plus 0.4 over 3.91 all to the power of 0.1. In order to do this, I guess I'm going to need something a bit better than my usual calculator, so let's um, put it into Excel. Uh, we might as well do the whole um, calculation. So we have 5 divided by 3.91. We have 0.4 divided by 3.91 all to the power of 0.1. And then we need to add these two together. So it's the answer there plus the answer there. So that gives us um, 1.63-ish. And that is equal to R over rho u squared. So if we therefore multiply that answer by the density, which was, I'm going to have to come back and hopefully get back to Excel again in a minute. The density was, uh, 1100. The density was 1100. So if we come back, density was 1100 so 
times by eleven hundred times by not point not nine eight squared which was the superficial velocity that gives us a shear stress of 17.2 17.2 okay so the shear stress on the beads is 17.2 well that's the shear stress we need to convert that now into a pressure drop and if we go back to the box out uh, a force balance on the particles inside a porous media gives this result okay um, la is the volume multiplied by specific surface area per unit volume that's the surface area of the solids present so the shear stress multiplied by the surface area of the solids present oh i needed the solids concentration as well so multiplied by the surface area of the solids present uh, gives us the pressure drop so that's the pressure drop if you like on the solids what about the pressure that's being exerted by the liquid um, well uh, that's the uh, pressure difference we need to multiply by the area and of course we need to take into account the area where the flow takes place so we need area times by voidage um, we can actually cancel area out so it's a force balance really is what we're doing here we can cancel the area out and that gives us the equation that the pressure drop from our force balance delta p is going to be equal to the shear stress in pascals times by sv specific surface area per unit volume times by the length over which we're doing the analysis uh, times by the solids concentration or 1 minus the voidage and we need to divide by the voidage okay um, it's certainly got the right units because we're in pascals here that's meters to minus one that's meters and these two are dimensionless so we're so the equation looks reasonable okay so let's try that then what it, what will the pressure drop be well we decided the um, shear stress was 17.2 uh, let's come down here so that's 17.2 uh, times by 3000 times by 2 times by 0 0.55 all divided by 0 0.45 time for my trusty calculator so that's uh, 17.2 times by 3000 times by 2 times by 0.55 divided by 0.45 gives us 1 2 6 I'm actually thinking my calculator might have gone wrong here. Um, let's just check this with Excel because I don't think we're getting the right answer there. Uh, the number seemed to seem to be a bit too big for what I was expecting. So we'll have to resort to using Excel. So we want 
17.2 times by 3000 times by 2 times by 0.55 divided by 0.45 okay um, equals 1 to 6 one three three one two six is uh, near enough what we want I'll, I'll only go to uh, three significant figures there pascals okay which the about 130 kilopascals if we're going to go for two significant figures okay so 130 130 kilopascals okay well we thought it might be 150 kilopascals it's actually 130 kilopascals we knew it was going to be significantly higher than the than the 99 which is what the cassini carmen equation came up with so that's just the lament that's just the viscous drag we know it's going to be significantly higher than that but it's actually a little bit less than what we estimated so final bit why is the answer to part six different to what we what we calculated in part one uh, because we have plus Uh, delta P due to form drag form means um, shape and the problem is that the flow is flowing past the particles if we have it going downwards and that will create some turbulences the other side of the particles um, from from the onset of the flow and this that there is energy that's lost which translates to an additional drag an additional pressure drop so we have um, roughly speaking 99 kilopascals due to viscous drag plus that additional 30 ish um, pascals due to a relatively small amount of form drag. Okay, and that's the end. that's question two completed.